Stabilo has brush pens? I thought they were highlighters and fine liners only. When I first tried these Stabilo brush pens, after hearing about them, it felt like nonstop several months ago. My initial reaction was, they're good, but not worth the hype. But then this week when I pulled them out to film for this review, I realized my first reaction was wrong. Let me show you why in this video with swatches and comparisons to pens that are similar, you might already have. If you're new here, I'm Sarah from Ensign Insights, where you'll see hand lettering tutorials and pen reviews to help you learn what works for you so you can feel good about your lettering right where you are. As you can see, I got these Stabilo brush pens in the 10 pack. They have bigger packs, but I didn't want to spend too much before knowing if they worked for me. I think the 10 pack has a good range of colors, although it doesn't have pink, which I personally always need. I like that the pen body is striped. I think that's really fun. The brush tip itself is a medium size. It's pretty short actually, which surprised me. Can you relate to this? When I'm testing out new pens, one of the first things I do is letter the colors just to get a feel for them. These don't have actual color names that I could find at least, so I'm just calling them what I think they are. I think these are a solid set of 10 colors. It's just missing a pink for me personally, but I really love that ocean teal color. The question is, would it be worth it to buy the bigger pack just to get a pink? These aren't the cheapest brush pens, so they really have to be worth it. Let me show you what else I did to try to decide that. Look at this. This actually blew my mind a little. While recording this video, I discovered that Stabilo Pen 68 has the one millimeter bullet tip and the brush tip. They're the same number of pen, just one is a brush. Like, they're the same ink colors and everything. They could be dual-ended. I was at Michael's a while ago looking in their clearance bin, and they had a bunch of fine liner pens, including these Stabilo Pen 68. So, I got a few colors. I've had both of these pens for several months, and I didn't even realize it. What? You may know Stabilo for their highlighters or their fine liners. You know the ones with the orange pen bodies. Those ones are called 0.88. I don't know how they're choosing these numbers, but those ones are a very fine tip, like a 0.4 millimeter. And I just don't really use them personally, so I got rid of them in my recent desk declutter. Side note, if you want to see a desk declutter, let me know. The Pen 68 is a one millimeter size, which I actually use a lot. So these ones made it past my declutter. So as I was lettering with these, because they're a medium nib, I noticed they felt a little bit like my Kiritake Futaburi brush pens, which you may know I love and recommend to beginners because they're a great medium nib. Have you tried them? Lettering with these side to side, you can see that the Futabiori is actually a lot longer of a nib, even though that's still only a medium size. It also reminded me of the Edding brush pens if you've tried those. The bounce feels pretty similar. I think I actually might like the Stabilo better than the Futabiori, which really surprised me and made me consider if I would recommend them to beginners over the Futabiori. But I think it comes down to the cost. The 10 pack Stabilo was at least double the cost of the 12 pack of Futabiori. That's a pretty big difference, especially if you're starting out on a budget. That's just my experience in the US. I don't know how easy it is to find these in other countries. I wanted to test a few more things to see if they are worth it, including blending. So I will show you that. But first, since these are a pretty short, medium sized nib, I wanted to see if they can letter on practice worksheets for large brush pens, or if it's better to use them on worksheets for small brush pens. I'm using the worksheets in my book to test this. If you haven't seen it, this is my new book, Hand Lettering for Beginners, which includes everything you need to get started and to practice and to start creating unique lettering projects. You can find it on Amazon or other places that you find books. Oh, and I'm using tracing paper on these worksheets so I can reuse these sheets in my book. I was actually really surprised by how well these brush pens did on the large worksheets. Have you noticed that I've been surprised by a lot of things with these pens? I just can't believe they've been sitting in my desk for months and months and months because my initial reaction was, they're just okay. And now all of a sudden I'm like, wait, these are like really great. 
So the breast tip is smaller, but it's really flexible. It seems like it has better flexibility than some of my large brush pens, meaning you can get a good contrast of thick and thin strokes, and you can get several different thicknesses of downstrokes. Before we get into blending, I wanted to see how well these would do on the small practice worksheets, and I found that they actually do work. You can easily get pretty small lettering with these brush pens. I will say though, they aren't going to get as thin of upstrokes as an actual small brush pen, so there isn't as much of a contrast if that's something that's important to you. But this just shows that they have a good quality brush tip if it can look good in multiple sizes. All right, on to blending. With my pen reviews, I often get asked about blending, so let me show you a couple different ways that I blended these. For this one, I'm using Bristol paper to blend because the paper is actually what's most important when it comes to blending. These brush pens are water-based, which is good for blending, and they have a good amount of ink, so they blended really well, actually. Just blending with the pens directly on the paper. The other blending technique I wanted to try was my rainbow watercolor background. I like to do this so I don't have to use my nice brush pens on watercolor paper since that can fray them sooner. So I just use a palette to lay down the ink first and I notice that it actually doesn't lay down that much ink on the palette. I have other brush pens like my Karen markers that are much juicier for this technique. I was actually struggling to have enough ink to blend with. So it's a little lighter of a rainbow blend, which is okay if that's the look you're going for. But here's just to show you, because they're water-based, they're going to do really well to blend as if they're watercolor. You probably wouldn't be my first choice to do this type of blending, especially since I don't have a pink. And normally in my rainbow blends, I use a dark pink in place of the red. For the word simplify here, I'm using my Marvi Deco Color Gold Pen. It's currently my favorite gold pen. I also added some shadows with my Pentel Touch brush pen. Adding shadows is a great way to make your lettering really stand out. My super simple trick for shadows is add them to the right and under. If you need more details, I do have a separate video on that. Now for the big question, are these brush pens worth it? Do you need to have them in your collection? I would say if you're looking for another unique pen that's going to be good quality brush tip and you have a little bit more to spend, yes, you should definitely get these. I am really enjoying them. And like I said, I've been surprised by a lot of things with these pens. If you are just starting out and only have enough to buy one pack of pens at the moment, I would actually recommend getting the Pentel Touch brush pens since they are small brush pens. They're a little easier to start with for some hand letters or the Kurataki Futaburi if you want a less expensive medium tip option. I have a whole video on the best brush pens for beginners and a playlist right here with that and more pen reviews. I'll see you there.